Welcome back to the AR-15 Barrel Series. Today, we'll be looking at a 14 and a half inch Optimum Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Line Barrel from Black River Tactical. This will be a part one of this barrel evaluation, and there may or may not be a part two. I had some severe issues with this barrel, including what looks to be a complete failure of the chrome lining, but we'll get to all that stuff in a bit. First, I should mention that this barrel was sent in by a subscriber, and I received it brand new, still in its original sealed packaging. First, we'll go over the specs of this barrel and my initial impressions so that we can get a better idea of what we're working with. The barrel is 14.5 inches. It's cold hammer forged from 4150 chrome molly vanadium steel, has a 5.56 NATO chamber, 1 to 7 twist, a mid length gas system, medium to light taper profile, with a 0 0.750 inch gas block journal, half by 28 threads, a chrome line bore, and a manganese phosphate external finish. BRT advertises that this barrel is tuned for reliable use with and without a suppressor attached. And for unsuppressed use, they recommend the use of a carbine H or A5-0 buffer. And for suppressed use, they recommend an H2 or A5-2 buffer. Moving on to the more formal inspection, we'll start with the weight. And the barrel weighs 1.6 pounds. And if we look at the barrel weight per inch of barrel length, this barrel lies pretty close to the middle. So I would call this a midweight barrel. Next, we'll move on to some gauging, starting with the throat erosion gauge. And this barrel is at a one on this gauge, which is what I would expect from new barrels. And this is a chamber dimensions gauge. It checks to make sure that the chamber and throat are at least a minimum size, which is important for general function and ammunition compatibility. And this barrel passes. Next up, we'll check the headspace with a new stripped JP bolt and Forster headspace gauges starting with the minimum headspace gauge. And the bolt is able to spin, which is good. So the barrel passes this gauge with this bolt. Next, we have a 223 no-go gauge, and the bolt is still able to close. So the barrel fails this gauge. And we will move on to a 223 field gauge. And we do not want the bolt to close on this gauge. And it doesn't, which is good. So that's a pass. So the headspace for this barrel looks to be in the middle of the serviceable headspace range for a 5.56 NATO chamber. Moving on to some external dimensions, here is the barrel extension diameter, which is a bit smaller than average compared to the others that I have measured. So this barrel should be easy to install, but the fit with the upper receiver will be a bit more loose compared to other barrels. And here is the gas block journal diameter. Again, this is a bit smaller than average. Typically, I would want this clearance to be close to zero, or just over, as that would allow for easy installation of the gas block while providing a good gas seal with the barrel. The largest pin gauge I could get in the gas board was a 71 thousandths, and compared to the other 14.5 inch mid-length barrels I've had so far, this is the smallest gas port by a pretty wide margin. Again, BRT does list some specific buffer recommendations for this barrel, and these combinations should provide for a nice shooting experience. But with a gas port this small, I suspect that it might be a little bit more sensitive to some of the lower powered ammunition out there. But if you don't shoot that type of ammo, it won't be an issue. Next up, we'll take a look at the inside of the barrel with my test long bore scope, starting with the body of the chamber. There isn't much to see here. Everything looks smooth with no obvious defects. So off to a good start here. And here we are at the throat. There is some smearing or roughness on the right side of the rifling lands from the reamer. Some amount of roughness isn't too uncommon to see, but the burrs and smearing on this throat are a bit worse than normal. Here is a comparison with a chrome-lined Criterion barrel, which has a much cleaner throat than the BRT. There is quite a difference between these two, as far as the throat is concerned. And here's a comparison with a Geisley Cold Hammer Forge barrel. The chamber on the Geisley is forged, and the chamber on the BRT barrel appears to be cut with a reamer. So, just due to the manufacturing differences, you won't have the burrs and smearing if the chamber is forged like the Geisley. But, there are some Cold Hammer Forge barrels that have reamer cut chambers like BRT. For example, the FN Cold Hammer Forge barrels that I've had also have reamer cut chambers. I'm sure there are pros and cons to both, but just a little detail to be aware of. Moving on to the rifling, we have some things to look at here as well. So, generally I would expect Cold Hammer Forge rifling to be pretty smooth, particularly after being chrome lined, since the chrome lining adds a bit of thickness that can help to cover some of the defects in the steel, and I can't completely tell here, but the ridges or lines that are perpendicular to the rifling look to be in the base metal and not just in the chrome, but I'm not positive about that. 
This is a straight view through the bore scope to look at the rifling from a different angle, which I found to be quite interesting. You can see that the ridges are quite prominent here. And here's another comparison with a Cold Hammer Forge Daniel Defense Barrel. And there's quite a difference in the smoothness of the rifling. And here's another comparison with a BCM BFH, which is a Cold Hammer Forge Barrel. And you can see some radial marks in the BCM as well. So this sort of thing isn't just unique to BRT barrels, but interesting nonetheless. Moving on, here is the gas port, which is also a little strange. You can see the dark ring around the port, which isn't something that I've seen before. It kind of looks like a burn ring, like the hole was made with a laser or something. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. And here's a look at the crown. You can also get a pretty decent look at the ridges in the rifling here, but the cut on the leading edge of the crown looks really clean. And now we're gonna go over the part where things start going sideways. This borescope footage was taken right after I got home after shooting this barrel, before I cleaned it or did anything to it. I wanted to document every step of this so that I could get a better understanding of what happened and also to be able to present it to Black River Tactical. There were some irregularities with the groups, which we'll get to in a few minutes, so I was eager to get another look at this barrel. And it's a bit difficult to see here, but the chrome is flaking pretty extensively. Again, I hadn't cleaned the barrel at this point. Some of the dark spots are just carbon fouling, but a lot of the dark spots with the sharp edges are from where the chrome has flaked away. And here's the barrel after I cleaned it. It's not 100% clean, with every last speck of carbon removed, but it's clean enough to get a good look at things. And I would describe this as a pretty extensive amount of chrome failure. I've had some chrome barrels that flaked a little bit here and there after some lower round counts, but this barrel has some pretty significant amount of chrome missing for shooting under 100 rounds. After seeing this, I emailed Black River Tactical on the evening of June 8th, and I explained my experience with the barrel, and I also gave them a link to a private YouTube video to show them the borescope footage. I asked them if this was expected for their barrels, or if they think there might be an issue. We exchanged a few more emails, and then on June 13th, BRT sent a return label so that they could get a better look at this barrel. UPS indicates that the barrel was delivered on June 19th, which is about 17 weeks, or about 4 months ago. The owner of the barrel and I have sent multiple emails asking for an update from BRT, but to this date, we have not received any communication from them after sending in the barrel. So, that's where things stand as of now, and I have no idea how they plan on moving forward. Regarding barrel break-in, BRT does not list a barrel break-in procedure on their website that I could find, so no barrel break-in was performed. To get the barrel ready to shoot, the barrel was fitted into an upper receiver from Bad Attitude Department with a BCM MCMR 13-inch handguard and a Psyonix bolt carrier group. When assembling the upper, the threads were greased and the barrel nut was torqued to the manufacturer's specification. To increase rifle stability during shooting, the handguard was fitted with a 3-inch front bag rider and the stock was supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5-0 buffer and spring coke green spring. No muzzle device was used to prevent possible interference. The trigger was provided by AR Gold. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before shooting the first group. Scope was provided by DNT Optics and is a 7 to 35 by 56. The DNT Optic is mounted in a reptilian mount that was supplied by Danger Space LLC. The mounting clamps were torqued to 45 inch pounds and the rings to 15 inch pounds. Parallax was set appropriately. A Garmin Zero C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite was mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter-induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots. This simulates a match or practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it and also gives us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cooldown. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with a ribbon. Each 30 shot group took about four minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 25 seconds. I'll be shooting three groups with this barrel. The first group is with Winchester M193. Next is IMI Razor Core 77 grain. And the last group is with Federal Gold Medal 77 grain Serum Match Kings. All right, so we're gonna get things started with Winchester M193. Obviously, I don't expect this ammo to group well, but the reason why I like to include an FMJ load like this is because that's probably what I would be shooting most of the time through a Cold Hammer Forge chrome line barrel like this. So this just helps me to get a more reasonable expectation using ammo that I'd probably be shooting through it the most. Anyway, all the shooting felt fine on my end with this group. The bolt carry velocity felt fine, but the brass was ejecting around 2.30 to around three o'clock. 
I know that the internet wizards will probably say that this is overgassed, but in my experience, ejection pattern isn't always a reliable way to determine a bolt carrier velocity or how well a barrel is gassed. Anyway, wind was pretty calm for this group, and the electronics picked up most of the shots, so we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Before going over the numbers, I just want to take a quick second to thank everyone that subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate the continued support. Every like, comment, and subscription helps the channel grow, which allows me to get access to more resources, create more content, and invest in better equipment to capture even better data. And for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. I've already got several more barrels, uppers, and rifles evaluated, and I just need to find the time to edit all of those videos. So there's a lot more content on the way that you won't want to miss. And the best way to stay up to date is to subscribe to my channel right here on YouTube. So again, thanks to everyone who's already part of the community. I really appreciate you helping me keep this going. And there's a lot more coming soon. And with that, we'll get back to it. All right, here's a look at the velocity chart for a Winchester M193, which is getting quite large. So here's a closer look at only the 14.5 inch barrels. And the BRT is a decent amount faster than the other barrels I've shot with this ammo with its average muzzle velocity of 3,033 feet per second. And then looking at the velocity standard deviations for Winchester M193, I've seen SDs from as low as 20 to as high as 41 feet per second. And the BRT came in around the middle with an SD of 28 feet per second. Looking at the individual velocity data, shot 10 was the slowest at 57 feet per second slower than average, and shot 28 was the fastest at 58 feet per second above the average. The average rifle stability score was 99.7, with the least stable shot at 99.4, which is within my normal range. So I don't think that I pulled any of the shots and I performed my normal shooting potential. And then looking over at the group, I didn't realize it at the time, but there were three shots that didn't make it onto the target. Shots 12 and 22 actually hit the wind ribbon that was hanging below the target. I didn't figure that out until I was editing this video. And then shot 16 didn't hit anything other than the backstop, making it impossible for me to determine exactly where that shot ended up which makes this barrel the first DNF, since I can't account for all the shots. The 27 shots that ended up on the target formed a 9.6 MOA group, and then shot 12, which hit the wind ribbon, probably adds another 45 inches on top of that. And then who knows where shot 16 ended up. So this is probably at least a 13 to 14 inch group, which is not a great start for the BRT. But that's what I ended up with, and we'll see how the next group goes. All right, the second group here is with IMI Razor Core 77 grain. I feel like this is a decent mid-tier ammo. It's a bit cheaper than the premium stuff, but still uses a 77 grain Sierra Match King bullet. So this seems to be a fairly popular load for those reasons, as it gives decent performance at a lower price compared to Federal Gold Metal or other premium grade ammo. The velocity is also pretty high with the IMI Razor Core, so that may be a consideration as well. Anyway, the shooting felt fine again on my end for this group. Ejection was around 3 o'clock to 3.30. Bolt carrier velocity and recoil felt fine. Wind was pretty minimal for this group. The Garmin captured the velocity for every shot, and the Mantis missed one shot. So we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Okay, so here is all my data for the IMI Razor Cord 77 grain, as sorted by barrel length. And if we cut this down to just 14.5 inch barrels, the BRT barrel had an average velocity of 2,622 feet per second, which is right in the middle of what I've recorded with all my other 14.5 barrels. So nothing out of the ordinary with the average muzzle velocity. And if we look at all the standard deviations that I've recorded from the IMI Razor Core, I've had SDs as low as 14 feet per second and as high as 27 feet per second. And the BRT Optimum barrel had an SD on the high side at 23 feet per second. Moving on to the individual velocity data, you can see that the velocity looks to have been a bit slower on the first 13 shots or so, and then sped up during the second half of the group. So that is kind of interesting. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and the least stable shot at 99.2. And then looking at the group, we ended up with some weirdness. Shot one went way off to the left. That shot felt fine to me when I broke it. Nothing looked or felt out of place, and the Mantis and velocity data looked fine. So I am confident in saying that that shot was not me. And I didn't know it at the time when I was on the range, but I'm guessing that a fair amount of the chrome let go during that shot and possibly caused it to drift off from the rest of the group. Shot two also ended up a decent amount away from the rest of the group as well. And then things went mostly normal after that. But this group definitely got my attention when I was at the range and made me think that there might be something wrong with this barrel. Before going over the group stats, we'll go over my AZ score for the new folks. AZ stands for A-Zone Equivalence Distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPSA A-Zone. The reason why I use this score 
is because it's easier for me to make sense of the group numbers instead of looking at the raw mean radius numbers. Anyway, moving on to the numbers, the 30 shot group size ended up at 4.731 MOA with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.749 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 188 yards. And if we break things down into 10 shot groups, the first 10 shots with those two outliers ended up with a group size of 4.7 MOA, then shots 11 to 20 tightened up quite a bit to 1.2 MOA, and then things open up again during the last 10 shots with a 2.0 MOA group, which gives us an average 10 shot group size of 2.6 MOA. And then I'll also point out the velocities here. The first 10 shots had an average velocity of 2,604 feet per second, and then the next 10 shots had an average velocity that was about 20 feet per second faster, and then the last 10 shots had an average velocity that was another 20 feet per second faster. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that, but certainly interesting to see. And here's a look for the leaderboard for IMI Razor Core 77 grain. I've tried to keep things as consistent as I can between the different barrels that I've shot, given the time and budget that I have to work with. Things aren't perfectly controlled, but I'm doing the best with what I have. Also, I am not a perfect shooter, and all of these groups could probably be at least a little bit better. And of course, this is a limited sample size, with this particular example from BRT having the chrome flaking away as I was shooting it. The BRT didn't do too bad, considering what the bore looked like after I got back from the range, but it ended up at about the bottom third compared to all the other groups that I shot with this ammo, coming in 14th place out of 18 groups with this ammo. So, not great, but not horrible either, considering the chrome was probably being ripped out of the barrel at this point. Anyway, we'll get started with the next group. All right, last group with this barrel will be with Federal Gold Medal 77 Green Serial Match Kings. In my opinion, I'd say this is a widely agreed upon premium grade ammo. It's been around for a long time, has a good reputation, and it's usually pretty easy to find at most places that sell ammo. So I figure it's a pretty decent load to include in this. Anyway, shooting on my end felt fine again. Ejection looked pretty good between three and four o'clock. Wind remained pretty calm. I didn't have any issues with the electronics, and the first three shots went into about a quarter MOA group, so that was pretty neat. And anyway, we will finish up and then take a closer look. All right, so here is all the velocity data for the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Seer Match King sorted by barrel length. And then if we look at just the 14.5 inch barrels, the BRT had the fastest velocity with this ammo at 2,470 feet per second, but that's only two feet per second faster than the Hodge. So the average velocity was right around where I expected it to be. Moving on to the velocity standard deviations that I recorded from Federal Gold Medal 77 grain, I've seen quite a spread from this ammo, with SDs as low as 11 feet per second and as high as 34 feet per second. There are a couple different lots of Federal in this data that are noted on the first spreadsheet, but this graph has everything compiled together. Anyway, the BRT had an SD that was on the higher end at 24 feet per second. And then looking at the individual velocities, it looks like the barrel started out faster and then slowed down a bit during the later shots in the string which is the opposite of what happened with the IMI, so that's kind of strange. Anyway, rifle stability looked fine, with an average score of 99.7, and the least stable shot at 99.2. And then looking at the group, it ended up looking very respectable. Obviously, shot 13 drifted farther away from the group, but everything else ended up looking fairly normal, so that's cool, I guess. Looking at the numbers, 30-shot group size ended up at 2.012 MOA, with a 30-shot main radius of 0.499 MOA, which equates to an AZ score of 283 yards. And then, breaking things down into 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was a pretty impressive 1.1 MOA, and then the average 10 shot group size was 1.4 MOA. And again, if we look at the velocities, there's not a huge spread, but the first 10 shots had the highest average velocity, and the last 10 shots had the slowest average velocity. I don't know if that's correlated with the chrome failure, but still kind of interesting nonetheless. Here are all the groups that I've shot with Federal Gold Medal, 77 Grain Steer Match King. We are up to 19 groups on this leaderboard, and the BRT, despite missing about half the chrome that's supposed to have at this point, came in 10th place. So, better than I would have expected for a half chrome line barrel. And of course, after all this, I wonder how a non-defective BRT barrel would do. But to be quite honest, I'm not sure that there will be a part 2 to this video. As I discussed earlier, I sent this barrel into BRT 4 months ago, and there have been multiple emails sent asking for an update, and BRT refused to respond to any of those emails. So I am not quite sure where things will go from here. But you can let me know in the comments what you think I should do, and also what do you think that BRT should do about this. And hopefully at some point this will be resolved. If you could like, comment, and subscribe to help me grow the channel, 
I would really appreciate it. And before signing off, I would like to thank the subscriber for learning out this barrel. Hopefully things turn out well, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Later.